by uh, Michael Killen, and recently the United States and the world celebrated the 50th anniversary of the United States landing on the moon. And I discovered that a remarkable author has written or pulled together s over 70 stories from people who were alive and experienced the landing on the moon. I have invited the author, Cariana, she goes by one name, to come on this show. I want to ask her questions like, what motivated her to put together moon landing and where she may be going next? So, Cariana, nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah, it's great that you're here. And you first started out, I believe, making Cariana's Moon Landing Project. Yes. And, and you went out and interviewed various persons. Like, like, I'm not in the book, but someone like me who was alive when we landed on the moon. So I would like to ask you, how did you come up with the idea to pull together all these stories into a book? Well, I, well, I just asked people, well, I got inspired by this woman named Roseanne Saxon, who works at the California Science Center in LA. And she inspired me to start collecting moon landing stories for the 50th anniversary. And so I started that and I realized that there are lots of people out there, so I just started collecting them. And I have this now. So. Okay, I'm just gonna take it for a second. I have to be very careful. And, I mean, this is amazing what you put together. We have a lot of photos and these are the different stories that people were willing to write and give you and for you to put this together. This is quite an accomplishment for a lady who's what, you're 25 years old? No, I'm eight years old. Eight years, oh wow. <laughs> this is quite an accomplishment. I was wondering, I know we have a piece of paper here, would you be kind to read one of the stories that's in your book. Yeah. So this is one of my favorites, which I happen, well, I got this let, I got this story from someone who, when the moon landing happened, was on the island of Guam. And so this is his story. I happened to be on the island of Guam in the South Pacific. At the time, there was no simulations or TV or radio coverage of the space flight on Guam. So the only thing I could do to get the news as it was happening was to go to the office of the Guam Daily News where they had a teletype machine, a kind of large typewriter that received and typed out news bulletins. I was, I, I was with a group of other people standing around this machine when the bells went off, signaling that an important story was coming over the wire. Then the telex machine started to type, Space Center Houston. Neil A. Armstrong emerged from the lunar lander named Eagle and started backward down a ladder to the moon's surface. We were all shouting and cheering. Then a few minutes later came the next news bulletin. Space Center, Armstrong steps onto the moon. And then, bulletin, moonwalk, African American astronaut American astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon Sunday night. Somehow, I managed to tear off the news bulletin over the teletype machine, and I still have it 50 years later. I'm attaching pictures of it. I, I still get excited when I think about it, and I hope we'll go into space soon. No, I, uh, that's all right, that's okay. By the way, that's amazing, and I just want to say something to the audience. You know, I'm supposed to be the star, ladies and gentlemen, of the show, but this young lady 
it, she's hard to compete with. She's so good. And so that was a very interesting story. And it's especially interesting because, you know, we can find people maybe in the United States who could tell us, you know, they're at home watching TV. But you have somebody from on the other side of the world sharing their story about what they observed. Uh, what's that? Well, here are the original news bulletins from the teletype machine that he was talking about. And he gave them to me for my collection. He and did? Well, that's amazing. You know, he did not tell me. You know, he is a friend of mine. His name is Ron Wolf. And he is a former reporter for two different newspapers. And then he founded a company that was a newswire firm. So he sent you those. Yes. That was very, very nice of him. Anything you want to say? Oh, I'll take that from you. OK. Now, would you be kind and read another story? Sure. So. Well, this is from, at my old school, there was, there was a friend, well, he was part, well, he was in a different grade, but, and his, and his uncle, I think, yeah, his uncle, and his, he was named after the astronauts in Apollo 11, because he was born that exact day that exact year when they took off for the moon, July 16, 1969. His middle name is McKeon, which are the initials from the astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Edwin Aldrin. And so they rearranged them to make this name. And so that I thought was pretty cool. Okay, now did you read this that was at the story or were you just telling me about it? Well, that was the story. That was the story. That, that is very interesting. And so you were inspired by a woman who works at NASA. And that led you to go and put all these stories together. Now, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to put them in a nice little book and are you going to put them on the internet? Yeah, we're probably going to do that also. We're going to L.A. soon, which is where Roseanne Saxon lives. So we're probably going to visit. Well, we're going to visit her, and so I can show her the book, which I've gone so far. And now, down in L.A. Uh, is, is Pasadena, the, uh, next to L.A. And they have the gigantic, a gigantic NASA facility. Are you going to go? Well, we might. Roseanne Saxon, are you, if you're talking about, you're talking about JPL, right? Yes. Yeah. I've been to JPL before because we have a friend there named Lena Banerjee, and his husband, I think, used to work at JPL. Yeah, I think he used to, or he might still, but I'm not exactly sure. But I got a tour of JPL. And then Roseanne Saxon gave me a whole map of JPL. So if we come next time, I know where everything is. And Wonderful. It'll make it. And I wanted to ask you about, you went to the celebration of the landing on the moon right next to an aircraft carrier that where NASA was putting on a big event. What, what did you think about that? Well, the USS Hornet was fun. The USS Hornet was the ship that picked up the astronauts during the splashdown when they landed in the water. And then they got to speak with President Richard Nixon, which I don't know much of, and I don't exactly need to know. But anyway, and so we spent some time there, ate lunch. We got to visit many exhibits about what happened and all that stuff. And um, we went to this um, exhibit that um, we went 
downstairs and we got to see the hospital which they carried I don't know but they carried something or sick for, cared for sick people and so well my brother went down there yeah. oh good and it, was that exciting yeah did you learn a lot yeah there were well we tried to figure out what beds we would have yeah if the, and then we found this bed with curtains, and but then we went along, and then we found this, um, we went back up, and then we got to see lots of presentations, and we got to meet people who were really involved with, um, with the moon landing, who were on that ship. And so we got to meet those people, and I, I even got some stories from them. Oh, good. Now, you know, we're in Palo Alto. California. And 10, 12 minutes from here, there is another like JPL, but it's not JPL, it's called Ames, NASA Ames. It's as big as JPL. I mean, large complex. It's about 10 minutes. Maybe you could, oh, would you like to get a tour of that yeah. facility? Yeah. Also, after we're going to the Museum of Technology, and then after that, we're going to meet my tennis coach, okay. who has a son who's give it, gonna give us, who we're gonna meet, so then later, um, like another day, he could give us a tour of this place he works at called SpaceX, which they're sending probes up. Oh, wonderful. Have you decided, this is my last question, have you decided on your next project? Assuming you'll have a next project. Well, we don't exactly, I don't exactly know what our next project is. Probably going to go further and study Mars or something. So that will probably yeah. be fun. And I, I have one, one more after all. Near your house is one of my dearest friends. He's a fellow named Harry Cohen. He's really one of the great artists. And he is going to invite you to come to his studio where he makes paintings. And if you'd like, he would work with you to make a painting. He'd help you get started making a painting that you can put in your book. That would be fun. Maybe we could put it on the back or something, although okay. it'd have to be small. And um, that, if it's, maybe we could do something of the moon, that would probably look good. Good. I'd love to meet Harry Cohen. Good. And now I want to ask this, my team, the crew, if they have a picture of the painting of sustainability that NASA asked me to, to make, would they please put it up? But if, whether they do or not, but about 10 years ago, uh, NASA asked me if I'd make this painting sustainability, and I asked them, what would, what would be the feeling or the imagery that they'd like in the painting? And the number two man of NASA Ames, which Ames is here nearby, said to me, Michael, we want to make the point that we arrived on the moon and we could look back at Earth. And we decided to come back to Earth and try to do more things to help the Earth and the people on the Earth have a lovely planet, okay? So, I want to thank you. My guest has been Cariana and Michael Killen. In a moment, we'll have another segment. Thank you.